Now, folks, we're diving into a four-bar outro. Well, the outro of the song means we're getting on out of there. That means this song is done and we need to put this puppy to rest. So how do we do that properly? Well, for me, especially in a chicken-picking tune like this Working Man Blues kind of groove, I like to start high and work my way low so that the song actually hits that climactic point right from where the singer ends, and then it ends on a nice A chord to finish it, right? So how did I do that? Well, I started all the way up on the high E note, which is the fifth note of the A major scale, right? And so actually what I do here is, is I chromatically walk down now from the E to the D. So E, E, E flat, D, right? And then I reach up and grab the B note on the 12th fret. And then I do a hammer on now from the 8th to the 9th fret on the high E string, which actually leads me to my A note now on the B string, um, uh, 10th fret. I'll spit it out here in a minute. Anyway, now that we've reached the A note here, here again, I'm going to grab that high E string and wail on that as a double stop. And what am I doing? I'm actually going to use it chromatically all the way down to the second fret. So I'll go. And you'll hear me again using ghost notes on that G string. Sometimes I lay into them, sometimes I just let them ghost out. But that's up to your, you know, that's up to you as to how you want to play them. But essentially I'm going. So actually from the six down to the five there. See, now I'm using these numbers on you as I describe licks. Isn't that cool? Those numbers work all the way around, folks. So from the six to the five note there, I do that quickly, but I add a chromatic note in between. So, let's see. There we go, and then. So I actually use those ghost notes in between every time to just add body to the sound, okay? Now we're all the way down to the second fret, which leads us into another bouncy kind of lick. Now, in these bouncy licks, you can actually just roll them. Which is kind of what I did, but what I do is I go back to the note. So I'll hit it. And then I go back to that same note that I just started on. What that really does is just adds time. You know, everything is about time. And, uh... We just really have to pay attention to that. But really, these licks, some of them actually came to me by accident, just trying to figure out how it was going to line itself up, right? So again, we're going to do that bouncy lick going back down. So, so I'm hitting the D note first, and then I'm pulling off that to the second fret of the B string, right? And then I'm hitting the, the uh, fourth fret G string, and then bouncing back to the second fret on that B again. So, and then chromatically walking into the A, bouncing that off to the open G. Then we land down on the D string fourth fret with an open G, or I'm sorry, an A note again. That's it. Then you bounce off to the open G. I knew that thing was going to come back in there, right? So then we do another chromatic walk down on the D, fourth to second fret, and then we hit the fourth fret A, then followed by the D, or the E note rather, D string second fret, and then as we pull that off, we hit the third and second note of the A string on the third and second fret, pull that off to an open A, and then we roll into the to the finality, if you will, of this lick by rolling. And I pull off on the F sharp note to an open E and then hit the A to finish. Or you can actually roll in with a half tone bend on the fourth fret, low E, if you prefer. Sometimes I like to just hit the A, the A chord, or I'll just roll into that. Now here again, these bouncy licks are really hard to teach because they just, it's more of a feel thing. So I would recommend that you just I actually
actually love these things to warm up with before I do a show because it's all about feel with these more so than it is notation. So if you're feeling it, just let it roll, man. You know, that's what you're supposed to do as long as it lines up with the timing of the song properly. So that will actually finish us off on this outro. Now, can you change the outro? Of course you can. You can start low and work your way high just like you did in the turnaround or the, or the intro. But then again, to me, it just sounds so much better when you, when you actually allow the climactic point to decline into the outro to end of the A. So I actually like starting high and working low. And of course, again, one of the major things that I teach in my teaching, of course, is the high, low, 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 high pattern, which you can actually find in my first course with True Fire called 10 Gallon Guitar. But here again, the high, low, low, high pattern is very important as well. And I always keep that in mind when I'm trying to figure out what I'm going to play for an intro, a turnaround, or an outro. So with the outro, I like to descend. So I use high to low. It just works for me, and I hope it works for you. So uh, now we'll move on to the next track.